Welcome our dear friends to Money FM Radio 93.7 FM. Today's session is about managing the cost of living. As usual, I would like you friends to give me a heads up if you can hear me. I'll be joined shortly by Stephanie. All right, Stephanie is here. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? You look very good this morning. You look very, very clean and very amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Your AI is on point, and you know uh, what, what you call this the makeup. Fantastic. You look very fantastic. Thank you very much. And I like the jacket, Stefan. You've invested so much in jackets, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. So we, we can just ask our, our friends, our audience to tell us if they can hear us, just to know that we are being heard. All right. Lozarin says, good morning, watching. Fantastic. Tell us if you can hear us. Okay. Good morning, Lozarin. It's good to see you. We have Hope who says, thank you. All right. Fantastic. So, Give us some, some comment if you can hear us. Oh, actually, Sam, Rosalind says you are looking great. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> eh, you look great, Stephanie. Rosalind says you look great. There we go. All right. So, good morning, Olivia. It's good to see you. Of course, we have Olivia, Yamika, and Goma says loud and clear. Fantastic. Right, Constance says we can hear you. Okay. So, are you back now, Stephanie? Yes, I am back right now. And uh, good to know that uh, people have already joined our live broadcast. And of course, that um, they're tuned in. You should also know that you could actually follow us right on the mainstream, 93.7. And uh, for any other edition, you want to use a direct call, then do it on 077-1616. 290 and of course we'll be able to respond to you just like that in the meantime i think uh, we should actually be going to um the topic of the day and of course today's topic is that we look at um practical ways uh to save and manage the cost of living exactly practical ways to save and manage the cost that, that, that's that's fantastic yeah, so that's what you're looking at this this beautiful morning, and I'm so I'm so happy that we have a lot of people joining us this morning. Please, friends, keep on sharing, keep tagging your friends, keep inviting your friends to come and you know join us, so that we can be able to discuss. So let's get started, Stephanie. What are we starting mm -hmm. with this morning? Yeah. So on a, on, on the first thing we look at dealing with as uh, uh, Zesco power problem. All right, Zesco power problem. And, and friends, please, in the audience, tell us how are you dealing with the Zesco power problem? Let's see how you are dealing with this issue. And you know, it's a very important issue, Stefan, especially because it's affecting everyone. All right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like everybody's affected by the, this power issue. So we want to hear from you, our friends. Tell us in the comments, how are you dealing with the Zesco power issue? For example, for me, because I'm always in the office, you know, I work late, I, I work for longer hours. Guys, accountants mm -hmm. are wired to work for longer hours. That's how we are wired. Accountants work for longer hours. So if power goes, I bought myself backup lamps. These are very cheap lamps, but they take you throughout the night. So I have two of these backup lamps. I, I got mm -hmm. this, this, this from Kamala. They're very, very affordable. It's 95 quarter each. All right. 95, 95. These ones can take you up the whole night. So whether power goes or power doesn't go, you used to be able to use the, you know, the lamps. That's if you want, you, you need power for, you know, for lighting. But if you need power for, you know, charging things like laptops, I have I have an extra laptop that I use. If this one power goes, I use this one and I can switch to the other laptop. So I've been able to do, you know, uh, such kind of stuff. So I don't know how your friends are managing the, the power problem. And just one issue I want to comment on here. This power problem has potential 
of making people lose their jobs. It also has potential also mm. of making people lose out on their businesses. Part because if you look at the power, the power, if the power goes in the morning and then it comes back in the mm. evenings, there's no business during the day. So how are you managing? Let's say you own a saloon, you own a barbershop, you have a butcher. How are you managing? Now, this is where investing in things that matter comes into place, Stephanie. I have a friend mm-hmm. who has a barbershop. This guy is great. You know what mm-hmm. he has done? He's bought himself a small yeah. inventor. He has a, he has a battery that he uses with an inventor. But the power goes, he's always having clients. Actually, for him, he tells me that when there's no power, he makes a good amount of money because a lot of barbers are not working. So him, as an inventor and, mm-hmm. and a battery, is working the whole day through uh, and all the way throughout the night, but because you know he has this uh, initiative. So I looked at him on the table, but why did you buy the invent and when did you think about buying? Because you know what, he bought it during the time of the PF. Because before mm. this government, we still had the power problem, all right? Yeah, friends, tell us in the comments how you are managing the power issue. So before before this government, Stephanie, we yeah. had a power issue. That's what he told me. So it, it was during that time mm-hmm. that he said, you know what, let me just buy an inventor and a battery. So he bought an inventor and a battery. He's been using those ones ever since. Now, that's a good thing. Yeah. So I was thinking, as I said, you know, people are complaining a lot. Everywhere you go, somebody saying, there's no power, Zesco. It has become a headline because we don't have power. But think of it this way. It's a positive thing. Sometimes it, it, you can look at it from the positive side. Like a friend of mine was telling me, when there's no power, he has an inventor and a battery, he's able to, to cut a lot of people because his friends are not working. So he sacrificed once yeah. on an inventor and on a battery. Now it is paying him very well. Not, not, not saying that power is a good thing, but I'm just saying what an entrepreneur and a business person can do to benefit more from, you know, from this power problem. Instead of complaining what? about power, it's not a new thing, Stephen. Power, power problem has, has always been there. We mm. experienced this in the PF government. We are experiencing this now. So it's not like power issues are going to, to be completely done away with. It's something that we've mm. gotten accustomed to. So instead of you sitting down, sitting home and complaining about the power issue, what are you doing about it? So that if the power comes, yeah. the, power, the power cuts, your income is not disturbed. What have you done about it? I know a guy who does some welding. Do you know what he has done? He has bought himself mm-hmm. a small genset and a small baby grinder and is now be able to operate and is able to do the welding. It's a small genset and is welding. He has sacrificed yeah. something. You know, so when there's no power, his work is not affected. So the point is, when you're running a business, do you think about tomorrow? If you depend on power, what things have you put in place to manage the cost of living? To manage the power problems, people have bought inventors, people have bought batteries, people have bought solars, people have bought gensets. What have you done so that your income is not affected? That's the question that we want our friends to answer, Stephanie. Right? Well, yeah. Similarly, I was also uh, told by one of the people, economists that I talk to mostly on my shows, and he was saying, you know, we've heard a lot about people talking about low charging, but we've heard very little about people that are telling you they've taken advantage of uh, this, um, the low charging that's going around. So his point was, instead of complaining, what opportunities have you actually gotten from the fact that people experience no power for six hours? So what have you gotten yeah. from it? That's what I'm actually saying. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to continue with that business that um, in the business of complaining, no, there's no electricity or maybe you do saloon, then obviously maybe try more with bread. It was actually giving those examples. And yeah, it did make a lot of sense. And um now it got me thinking to say I definitely need to, you know, get on uh, on the on the train of doing something about power. Let me offer a service that may maybe some entertainment for people talking like now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and, and if you think about the power issue, even at the household level, some people are saying we are losing relish. Well, but come on, you know there's this problem, and it's not going away anytime soon. Why are you mm. buying relish in bulk? Can you reduce on buying stuff in bulk so that you can just buy what you need, what you can use, all right? Keep the money. Mm-hmm. Don't buy the rich in bulk. Just buy what you can use at the household level. 
All right. So when, when 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 you have when, when the problem is is, is uh, fixed, then you can begin buying in bulk. So for now, yeah. it's, not, it's, not, it's not enough to just complain because guys, it's, even if you, you 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 shout at the government, it will not change. It's about the water. The engineers have told us that at least after what we're being told, the water levels are low, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Even if you change government today, they will not bring water in that dam. They won't fill it up. It will still be there. It will still be the same. So what are you doing mm. about it? Because you have a house to feed, you have bills to pay. So what have you done to manage this power problem? Now, I was telling you, I depend so much on my laptop, so much on power, even me without power, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck, all right? So I have done something. Mm -hmm. If you go to Airtel or MTN, they are selling this, this to, my, to my solar lighting uh, systems where you can even charge your phone, you can charge, some of them are even able to charge the laptop and stuff like that. They are going, you pay about 1,000 mm. first installments, and then you begin to pay 100 and something for the next uh, three years or so. You pay for the next 12 months, you pay slowly up until you finish the 4,000. They are helping you. So go to Airtel store, go to MTN store, get 1,000 departure, go and buy those solar lighting systems. You pay 1,000 departure for a start, and then what do you do? The other balance will begin to pay slowly for the total of 12 months. That's what I was told. Okay, we went to check mm. at Manda Hill. So these are other ways you can manage this power problem. If you don't depend on heavy, heavy, you don't use heavy equipment. For example, you have a saloon, you have a barber shop at home, all right? I'm not talking about big, big industries because that's a, a different issue. They just need the actual power. But mm. for small, you know, a, a business people like those with saloons, those with barber shops, welders, all those can, can implement, can buy genses, can do all this kind of stuff. People fix phones. I was in town center the other day, power cuts. Almost every shop has a genset in town center. They turned on their genset and they, were fixed, they kept on fixing their phones. But people that are educated are busy complaining. People that have got the money to implement stuff, they are busy complaining. Why are you complaining? What are you doing to, to, mm. to ensure your, your, your income levels are not disrupted? That's the point that you have to be thinking about because the power issue is not new to Zambia. It's not new. We've been experiencing load shedding ever, ever since time I can remember. It's not new. So yeah. stop complaining, start implementing things that are going to help improve your life. Because even if you say the president has lied, it's not about lying. It's not about lying. It's about the water. Let's just, just be clear on this one. People are saying, the president has thought, you know, I don't support, I, I'm not a politician myself. But guys, we have to be honest where we need to be honest. Even if the president, you say he has lied, whatever he has done, it won't change anything because mm. it's not his job to put water in the country, but it's just the water, it's, it's the rains, okay? So when you say, didn't they see this? No, it's you. What are you doing about it? Because yes, you are disappointed. I'm equally, I'm equally affected. Everyone is affected, but what have you done to manage the situation at the household level, at the business level, so that your income is not disrupted? That's yeah. the mentality of a high achiever. When there's a problem, see a solution. For example, mm -hmm. I have utilized the power problem. I'm operating uh, and things are working very well. Like I said, when power cuts, if I'm in the dark, I'm supposed to lecture. I'm in the dark. I'm supposed to have a meeting. I'm like, what do I do? I turn my cheap lamps from Kamala. Very, very cheap, but they're effective. They light me up the whole night because I work longer hours. All right? Mm -hmm. My laptop can charge on a, on a simple solar system. And you can, you, 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 you can do the work, the light work. I'm not talking about heavy machineries. So when you are working, don't chew everything. Save some money for the unthinkable. And this is the time for the unthinkable. The money mm -hmm. you save should help you to buy equipment that are going to help you survive. If you have a welding uh, a, a job, buy a genset. I have, I have done metal fabrication myself. I know how to weld. And I know how to use a genset and connect it to a welding machine, to, to a, to a welding machine and weld and use a grinder. I do that. I'm a fabricator. I've done that course before. And I was mm -hmm. the top student when I was graduating. So I understand welding, extremely fantastic. Not this combo welding, the actual arc welding, gas welding, all those blazings. I know how to do those things because I've done this mm -hmm. course and I was a top graduating student. Have you seen? Wow. I was among the mm -hmm. yes. So instead of complaining about power, what have you been doing with the money you've been making in your business? Since the time now to use those monies to buy things. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, um, this situation should actually cause somebody to spend less because, um, yeah, 
people definitely will spend less on how much they used to use on um, certain products. Like um, somebody said, maybe you would reduce on uh, paying for services like TV. Well, I don't know, <laughs> but that's them trying to say they are going to spend less. Yeah. And, you, and um, yes. Yes, Stefan. Yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. This TV is 600, Stefan. There's for 600, there's for 300. This, these are expensive. Even Go TV is about, six, is about 300 or so, 280, whatever. 600, you can sell. Don't pay. DSTV, why are you paying 600? What if you're not watching TV? So save that money. Use it for buying charcoal, maybe. Buy charcoal. All right? Or go and buy these lamps. It's 95 kwacha one that they have. I'm using them. They are very effective. So instead of complaining, what are you doing about the situation? You know, politicians are both making you feel like they're also affected. Guys, they are not affected. They have, they have genesis, they have power systems, and they are looking at you, they are laughing behind this and say, what, what is wrong with these people? Can't you just buy a simple solar for yourself and just light up your house? Can't you buy yeah. a simple inverter for your barbershop? Can't you buy a simple inverter for your saloon and just, you just need even these lamps for a saloon. Even just a, a simple solar system to power those, those uh, things in, in your saloon. You can do that. A simple battery, a simple genset can power the saloon. So why are you complaining? That's the question. Do something about it. It's not about the president. I repeat, even if the president to say he lied, I don't agree with you because it's about the water. It's the water level. It's not about the president or the politician who, who, who lied, who didn't lie. Then, but that's, that's irrelevant. That's for people who are driving an agenda. For a professional like myself, I can't say the president lied because he has no control over these natural uh, you know, uh, factors. These are natural issues we're dealing with. It's not about politicians lying to you. You're going to dislike somebody who's innocent. If you go on the ground right now, Stefan, people are bitter, extremely bitter. And then I'm wondering, what is wrong with you? It's the water levels that are going down, all right? Even if you, 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 mm. you, you become bitter, it won't improve the water levels. So just implement things that are going to help you move forward and keep making money. It's not about a, pro, a, a political promise like some influencers who are data are doing, they are saying, you know, the president lied, they did what? It's not about the president, people. Can we be fair for goodness sake? This is a power, a, a water issue. So what if the president tells you, I'm going to bring power, I'm going to cut out shedding and then there's no water. So what? These are the unthinkable things that happen. In business, we say, can you, uh, 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 you know, accept Risk because risk are inevitable, they happen every single time. So the president did not see that the other level would go down because it's not God. All right. When he said what he said, he may have said it in good faith. But now that the other levels are down, what should what do you want him to do? So what? I mean, just be fair. For goodness sake, it's not about the president or the politicians that are driving the narrative. As a professional, I'm telling you this is a water, a, a water, a water issue. So it's your job to do something about your situation. Forget politics. Improve your life. Mm. Yeah. Forget the politics. Wow. Yeah, definitely. So if, oh, Mr. Lusambo, if you look at, at, um, if you look at this comment just before it goes, Stephanie, there's a comment here which says from okay. Charles, and I like this comment. You may read it, Stephanie. Okay, Charles says, our greatest enemy is complaining bitterly without looking for uh, possible solutions. Hustlers and uh, so-called uneducated folks are busy on the street looking for ways to take advantage of this economic glitch. Uh, buy solar, inverter, and you will be covered up this, uh, this to shall pass. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just beautiful, Stephanie? That's the mindset, yeah. Stephanie. That's the mindset. I love the point complaining. Yeah. I love the part that says complaining. Yeah. yeah. People on part is complaining. Mm -hmm. Hustlers are out on the streets right now. They are hustling. They are working. They've bought genesis. They've bought source. They've bought inventors. You are busy complaining. So what if you complain? Nothing mm -hmm. will change even if you complain. Change is you implementing something. That's what brings about change. Yes, Stefan, over to you. Yes, I think we should, uh, it's safe for us to go to the next point, and we are looking at um, the art of spending less. So as we look at the art of spending less, of course, we're going to align it with um, how you can take advantage with, uh, of this situation that we're going through. But definitely, how do you get to master the art of spending less, Mr. Lusambo? 
You see, the art of spending less, people that spend less have a capacity to mind their cost of giving. People that spend less, Stephanie, have the opportunity to grow their financial base because they are spending less. Now, I'm going to give you three types of money habits that people have. Brown mm -hmm. people. Here's what they think of money. This is, this is a research that's been proven, all right? Research proven. Mm -hmm. Brown people, when, when they think about money, they think about paying bills. Because they are broke, they want to pay bills. So they say, if I have money, I'm going to pay my rent. If I have money, I'm going to buy this. I'm gonna... They think about money as a tool to be used when you want to pay bills. That's what a lot of broke people think. If you go to the middle class mm -hmm. people, people that are in employment, people that are getting a salary, you know, they think having an employment is um, having an employment with a guaranteed salary is it is a tool to be used to get a loan. You can uh, buy yourself a vehicle that you can't afford to service, or you can you know you can uh, buy yourself whatever you want to buy yourself because you have a job. You can get you can borrow. You can go and get a fridge on on, on credit. They did that for me. So they have this thing of saying money gives you some security of you know because you have a job you have some security people that are yeah, successful yeah. don't think like that about money successful people when they think about money they think of it as how can i get this money and put it into the mm. money maternity what so that this money can give birth to more money that's the mindset of what of successful people they're always thinking about getting the money taking it into the money maternity what and making that money give birth to more money. Have you seen? Mm -hmm. So now that's how you save money by multiplying it. Turn it into the money maintained what? Multiply it. How do you multiply mm -hmm. money? Buy incomes. How do you buy incomes? Invest the money into things that are going to bring more money in your life. Only when you have enough money in your life, you can begin to buy cars and all these other things. So there's, 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 there's mm -hmm. all this money mindset about people. And they don't know it. Right now, if you ask somebody who's broke, if I give you money, what are you going to do with it? They're going to either buy buy shoes, buy a phone, or buy clothing, or pay rentals. They don't think about multiplying money, taking that money into the money labor world, so that it can give birth to more money. They don't think in those lines. Mm. That's why they, they remain broke, because they're always thinking about spending money. When money comes, they spend money. The middle class in employment, whenever they have a pay rise, what do they do? They raise their expenses. Have you seen? Whenever they have a parents, mm -hmm. they raise the expenses because they think in those lines. They are very poor money habits. Successful people, on the other hand, are thinking, how can I buy a, a three-year three bond? How can I buy those stocks? How can I grow my poultry business? How can I... They are thinking about multiplication of the money. Now, the best way to save mm -hmm. money is to make more money. That's the best way to save money because when you make more money, then you can save the money. If you can't make more money, don't spend more money. Spend less money so that you can save some money. Or if, mm. if, if you're able, do both. So when you master the art of spending less in this economy, you are going to survive. I'm going to give you an example. You, you, you are getting a very small side, mm. whatever side that you're getting, and then you are keeping five people at your home, all right? Just to show off that you're working in the family. So what if you're the only one working in the family? So what? Do you want to keep on stressing all the time? Let's not praise you no know, lack of planning. Say no, I'm the one working. No, these people can survive on their own. Some of them are even adults, but they are still cringing on to you because you have a job. No, cut off the loose ends. Let people learn to fend for themselves. All right. So mm -hmm. if you don't understand the heart of spending less money, you will not survive this economy. Do you know why? Because this power mm -hmm. issue. Some companies are going to have an excuse to kick you out, right? Mm -hmm. Some companies are going to have an excuse to kick you out because of this money issue. Some companies are going to have an excuse to say, you know what, we don't have money coming in, we have no sales. They are going to cut your salaries because of this money issue. So what are you going to do now to survive? You are going to have expenses mm -hmm. that will be inflated, but your salary is being reduced and you have inflated expenses. You are living in a very expensive house than you should be living. So that main type of inflating your expenses with the more money you make should come to an end if you're going to mm. survive this particular economy. So you can begin by your own children. If you buy a necessary bottle of juice, I always talk about juice because I see kids in these homes drink juice like mad kids. They just be drinking juice the whole day, you know. But those small, small monies, you take your children, you go with them to show right? They cry for this, this chi -chi toy, you buy this toy. You, you, you are moving around right. with your children, want to buy those popcorns, want to buy this. Thing. You are spending those 10, 20 watches. If you put those in a month, 
It will shock you how much money they've spent just on impulse buying for your kids, just to embrace your kids. Put your kids in order. Mm. Let them understand the cost of living is high. All right? Make a timetable for your food at home. Don't cook food. If you mean anything, you can cook it more somewhere. Prepare, all right, for the right amount of uh, uh, relish to cook, right amount of food to prepare, and stuff like that. So if you are unable to pay rentals in a house that you're living in, or you're, you're sensing danger, because now the unthinkable can happen. You want to save as much as you mm. can, so that you can invest that money. That's the best way to save money. Right mm -hmm. now, because we are lacking those mm -hmm. money, good money habits, we are unable to plan for money and save money. So, in the end, we just spend money as it comes. No, the purpose of money is to give you some peace of mind. All right, so if you are, you, you are not having a peace of mind, it's not a good thing. So, spending less is going to help you survive this economy. Cut those, those, uh, tighten up your spending habits. It's okay to you know what to downgrade, it's okay to move into a small house. It's okay to eat vegetables. It's okay, you know, to cut on DSTV. It's okay to just, you know, use bus if you can't afford to buy fuel. It's okay to cut down on a necessary expense. It's okay to tell somebody you're sponsoring us, you know, I can't afford for now because things are bad. It's okay to say, I do not have. It's okay to people are keeping to go back to their parents if their parents are alive. Let them go back because now the economy is bad. You are trying to survive and save as much as you can to invest. You can't help the poor by being mm -hmm. one of them. That's how it works. You have to make a difference. How do you make a difference? Master the art of spending less. Stop spending money on things that make you rich. Stop doing things that actually will make you rich. Because spending on things that will make you rich is making someone else richer. Only that you will be looking rich, but you are broke. So start spending money on income that will make you rich. Tighten up your spending habits. It's all about spending, Stefan. If people can manage spending, guys, you're going to survive. You have an iPhone. You have an iPhone 12, iPhone 13, iPhone whatever, and you are broke. Sell that phone. It's simple. Go and buy a small phone. Look, I have a phone. I have this small phone. I have this small phone I use, mm -hmm. right? I can afford the iPhone 14. That's just a fact. I can afford today to buy one. But I have this small phone, all right? Of course, I have another, another iPhone, which I use, but I also have this other small phone. So if you have big, two, two smartphones, sell one and get some money and use it for something meaningful. Or if you have a phone and you are broke, which can give you 5,000, 10,000, sell it, go and buy. This one is just 200 kwasha. It's good for communication, you can talk. So people are holding on to phones and they are broke. Why can't you sell that phone? And buy something cheaper. If you are, you, are, you, you have an iPhone, sell at five, ten, ten thousand, eight thousand. Get your phone for two thousand. You still have internet, you still have Facebook. All right. Don't, don't, don't die because you're not using an iPhone. No. Sell that iPhone. I know people are broke right now, Stefan, but they have expensive phones in their hands, and they are so broke. They are being kicked out of their houses, but they have expensive phones, laptops. Sell those things. The reason why we buy assets is, is for us for them to come and cushion us when we are when the rainy day comes, right? So that's the whole idea that we are looking at here, Stefan. Indeed. Yeah. Another interesting thing that we could look at is uh, how you can actually manage your debt. Uh, a number of people, if we have hundred, for example, then we should have forty-seven percent of people living on debt, and uh, this is because yeah. people really don't know how to to manage their debt. And so um, I, I actually want you to run us through how does somebody begin to manage debt and is it possible to live a debt-free life? You know, it's very possible to live a debt-free life. And you see, one of the things that we emphasize on all the time is that when it comes to managing debt, the first step to managing debt is awareness. Stephanie, mm -hmm. for somebody to manage their debt, they have to be aware that debt is affecting them. And I always say this, Stephanie, debt is not a good thing. Debt is the way the smart people make money. On the, the, no, no, the, the Bible calls them the stupid ones. People that are ignorant. If you mm -hmm. are owing somebody, if you go to the bank today, you go and get a loan for 50000 kwacha. My friend, you're not just owing the bank. You're also owing somebody who put that money in the bank because that person was promised by the bank that they'll give him some interest at the end of the year. 
So the only mm -hmm. bank can pay that person interest is if they lend that money to you. When you use that money, you pay that interest. The bank is going out to pay the other guy some interest, and they mm -hmm. they're going to make some interest. So when you have debt, you are owing two kinds of people. So debt makes you some type of slave. This is why we say debt is not a good thing. If you can avoid the unnecessary debt, please avoid. But if you're already in debt, the first step to managing your debt is awareness. Get a piece of paper and a pen and write down how much money you owe in total. Some people who are in debt right now don't know how much money they owe. All right? So get a piece of paper and a pen. The first thing is awareness. Accept that debt is affecting your life. Debt is making you lose a piece of mm -hmm. money. Debt is making you look like a crook. That's what debt makes you look like a crook. People think you're dishonest because you can't afford to pay. No, you got the money under false pretense, you're dishonest. But maybe things are just genuinely hard. So what do you do? Get mm -hmm. a piece of paper, write all your debts down. Now, there are two ways of paying off your debt. There's mm -hmm. one you call the snow uh, effect, where you begin to pay small debt first, all right? You begin by sorting out small debts so that you can motivate yourself to now demand with bigger debts and not begin to pay bigger debts. Or there are another way you can bring paying off by bigger debts, and then you go and uh, start paying off small debts. Now, here's how you do it, okay? Here's how you do it. Once you're aware mm -hmm. that you are, uh, the, the debt is affecting you, you write it down to find how much debt uh, you owe 20,000 kwacha. Okay, how do I pay this money? So first of all, look for the source of income that you have right now. You know you're owing uh, 20,000 kwacha, all right? The mistake you should not make is to go and borrow to clear some people. No, don't do that. At this point, say, I'm not going to borrow any money. The people you owe will not kill you if you tell them, to, for now, you do not have, you give them a plan. So what you do is you say, fine, I owe 20,000 kwacha and I don't have money. How much is your source of income in a month is 5,000 kwacha, which is going to be wiped by the debt. So what do you do? You look around your, your, your house. You say, how well, can mm. I source some money? Because this month I've got a salary of 5,000 which is coming, but I need to eat, I need to pay rentals, I need transport. Okay? So maybe I can just spare a 2,000 from my 5,000. Now look around your house. What is it that you have in your house that can be sold? Don't have emotional attachment to assets in the house. The reason why you buy those things is for them to come and cushion you when you need the help. So look around your house. If there's any, you have two, two fridges in that house. There are two freezers. There's a fridge in the kitchen. There's a fridge in the living room. Some people even have fridges in the bedrooms. Can you offload some of the assets? It's okay to stay without a freezer for the peace of mind. Because once you have a peace of mind, you're going to plan properly. You want to get off debt as soon as possible. So how do you get off debt? Number one, you make more money so that you can pay off some debt. How do you make more money? Not to increase your money. Look at what you can sell. You have an iPhone 14, you have an iPhone 10, iPhone 11, iPhone 12. How much can you sell your phone so that you can pay off some of the debts that you have, all right? Sell that phone. You have an expensive TV sell that TV, downgrade to a smaller TV so that you can have some money, you know, what to clear off some debt. What you want here is to clear your debt as soon as possible so that you can start a life on a good note. If you have a lot of debt, it will be difficult for you to grow. So look at what you can sell, the sofas. Do you have a car? I know a lady who came to me for advice over debt management and she has a car. She, she owes, you know, she owes 55,000 because she's losing a peace of mind. She has a Mark X. I tell her, the Mark X can pay off 55,000 because at once, you don't have to borrow. Sell the mm -hmm. Mark X. Get on that bus. Nobody cares who you are on that bus. So sell that Mark X. Sell that bits and do it. Go and declare the debt at once so that you can have a peace of mind. A peace of mind. When you sell that money, the remaining balance now, we can plan and sell, you can invest it to multiply it. The first thing you don't want to, to have in mm -hmm. your life is debt. Because debt, the Bible says, you become a slave. That's how it makes you. So after you've noticed that yeah. you can sell the TV, you can sell the fridge, you can sell the phone. If you have a car, you can sell the car. Sell whatever it is that you can sell. And sometimes you're going to shock yourself. After you make all those sales, you're going to discover actually, maybe just from within your house, the TVs, the microwaves, you know, those uh, big cookers, so a very big cooker, sell it, buy that small two-place cooker, it's too sickisty. You can sell that big, place, that big, big cooker, maybe maybe 2,000 or 3,000, and then buy that car one for what, for 550, second, nice one, and that's the car oven also. You can do your automobile if you like uh, doing shockers, right? So you can sell the big, the big fridge, the big stove, and then buy a very small cooker. Sell that big, big fridge, 
buy a small fridge for 1000 that one which we can just put maybe relish and you no know, water and stuff like that so downgrade what you are trying to do here you're trying to to clear people's debt because what when you're owing people it affects your business it affects your thinking ability you will not progress very fast so to progress avoid debt clear debt as soon as possible and then if you discard it from whatever you can sell all right the, the, the things you can sell are not able to clear your debt. Then make a plan now, because now you would have, you'd have uh, maybe uh, raised a, a, a few coins from the, the sales from your house, you know, the assets that you have, if you have a car, whatever you have, you, you sell, so you reduce to downgrade. You move from a very expensive house into a cheaper house. You sell, so you save some money. If you did this, Stephanie, you'll be shocked how much money you're going to raise. People have got money in these houses. They have nice fridges, TVs, nice fridges, nice cookers nice sofas nice microwaves nice blenders you know nice uh, bread there there's always somebody who wants what you have in your house that's what you must know for many people in sony come to facebook we advertise for you we sell for you you sell those things all right so that you can clear off your debt no to come for sony your peace of mind is, is important than feeling shy people what are people going to think of if i sell my car if i sell no it's just sell that car Honey, those people are struggling. You just yeah. don't know they are going through a lot. Just sell that car. No, I'm getting yeah. emotional. Mr. Lusambo, people are afraid of um, people are afraid of making a habit, making a lifestyle where every single time you owe someone, you sell off, and she might just end up selling everything that you have. Because for others, they definitely do make it a lifestyle. What do you think? You see, here, here we're talking about somebody who wants to grow. Like I said, awareness. Mm -hmm. For you to clear your debt, there must be a change in your lifestyle. You can't clear your debt if you keep living the same luxurious lifestyle. For you to pay off someone else's debt, there should be a change of lifestyle. And these are the things we are teaching people. We are mentoring people for the next three months. All right? We have a lot of people that we are mentoring now for the, for the next three months. And we are going to do this debt management in details. To help you understand because success is about the mindset so if you can work for, on the mind and put it straight people can succeed so it's not about no yeah. i'm scared that i'll start selling stuff no the, the easiest thing to do is to stop borrowing i think that's the best thing to do to stop borrowing mm -hmm. right so, to, you, so, so if you stop borrowing you stop selling your assets to pay off the debts if you keep borrowing then you have to sell off your assets to pay off your debts so there's nothing like, no, it's a habit yeah. of selling stuff. If you're in trouble, accept you're in trouble. You owe people. Those people, they look at you as an investment. They gave you the hard-end money, which they worked for so hard, all right? So you have to pay that money back. It's not a charitable organization when you owe somebody. Pay back the debt. So how do you pay back the debt? Yeah. Sacrifice something, because somebody else sacrificed their money for you. So why should you sacrifice your TV? So why mm -hmm. do your kids cry, all right? Sacrifice your TV. All right, sacrifice your sofa, sacrifice your fridge, sacrifice your car. When you are stable, you can always buy those things. What you don't want is anything to affect your peace of mind. Mm. Well, but we I have very little good. time. We are time. Can we go to preparing for the unthinkable? And of course, as we look at preparing the unthinkable, maybe the the last thing we should look at is uh, downgrading. I know we talked about doing downgrading last week. Uh, looks like somebody needs to downgrade, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, when you think about the, the, the unthinkable, Stephanie, you know, like I was saying, mm -hmm. when you are in employment, those money habits, money, 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 money habits are important because money can affect mm -hmm. a lot of things. If you're always stressing about money, it will affect your relationships with your wife, with your fiance, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your relatives. Money has a potential to make you look like you're stupid when you are not, mm -hmm. right? It makes you look down. You may even think you are ugly because you are broke, all right? So what I'm yeah. trying to say here is that if, if, if you are going to be happier, Prepare for the unthinkable. Now, here's what I want to, to mention before I even talk about that. We have about 14 minutes before you can go. Now, guys, when I say prepare for the unthinkable, here's what I say, what, what, what I mean. Life happens on a daily basis. For example, now we have power issues. We don't have power in this country. Mm -hmm. We are having power problems. 
How, how did you prepare for unthinkable? Do you have an emergency fund that you can tap into and just get that man buy a solar or buy a battery or you know buy an inventor? All yeah. right. So as somebody who wants to grow yourself financially, it's always important to prepare for the unthinkable. The unthinkable is inevitable. Your mom will just fall down and collapse. Your sister, your, your son, your daughter, your wife, even yourself. Anything can happen at any time. You can you have a car breakdown. All those things may happen. So make it a habit to always prepare for the unthinkable. Spare even a small amount of money on a monthly basis so that you can prepare for the unthinkable. Put it aside. When the unthinkable happens, you should have where to start from. All right? It's not a good thing to have zero starter. starter. No. Have something where you can start from. But even people who are going to help you can help you knowing that, you know what, this person has got something that they are doing. Let's help them because you have a start. People have seen that you've started something mm -hmm. that's working. So have where to start from. I think that's a very important issue to look at here, Stephanie. But again, when you think about mm -hmm. the unthinkable, the unthinkable gives you a peace of mind. It's not a good thing to live life like mushrooms. Mushrooms only grow to die. They only grow to be eaten. And some people live like mushrooms. Whenever they make the money, the money is, meant, is made only to be spent the same time they receive the money. Sometimes the money is even spent before it arrives, all right? So to help you prepare for the unthinkable, avoid certain habits such as getting unnecessary advances at work. People get like advances, payment at work. Every time you apply for an advance, you know what that means? It means every time you get an advance from your workplace, you are borrowing from your future self. So that means next month you still will not have enough. You will need another advance which will lead you into debt before you mm -hmm. end the mushroom cycle, debt after debt, debt after debt. There's nothing good about living life like a mushroom. So prepare mm -hmm. for the unthinkable. Save some money on a monthly basis. Make it a habit. Every coin saved is worth it. I have a box here. I'm not sure if I can show it to you, Stephanie. Let me show you this box. I have a box in my mm -hmm. office here. Let me show you this box where I put coins. And just coins alone have gone all the way up to 2,000 quarters. Just coins. See, I have this box here. Okay? This is the box where I put my coins. And I put my two quarters. I throw in this box. Have you seen? It's a box that I, somebody made for me. I put, I put coins. I put coins here. Every coin counts. Every coin you save counts. So this, this box has become heavy now, but by the time of opening, it can go up to 5,000 coins. 5,000 quarter of worth of coins, even more. Because the last time I, I opened it, when it was just about half, it was about 2,000 quarter. You can imagine just coins, simple coins. When you get coins, you put in this box. You get coin, you put in this box. Just have it welded. So every coin that you save makes a difference. You don't have to have a bank account for to save money, even a coin. Whatever I come back from if I have change, what do I do? I get this box and I put my change in this box. So if I have a two quarter, I put my two quarter in this box. Okay, fine. I have a two, I have a ten quarter, I put my ten quarter in this box. So every single time I know if things went to the waste, I'm gonna break this metallic box. And I'm gonna find something over two thousand mm -hmm. quarter at least. Have you seen? It gives you a starting point. Mm -hmm. You can do eight or pantumba. Eight or pantumba, you can save as little as 100 quarter, 50 quarter, 20 quarter. Go and do that, that pantumba stuff. It helps. So you can always prepare for the unthinkable. Don't live life like a mushroom. Be ready for emergencies because emergencies will always happen because you are alive. All right? So be ready for the things that are going to affect your financial muscle. Prepare for the unthinkable. Yeah. Well, have we looked at uh, downgrading? Yeah, so like we said about, I think that downgrade, we, we, we've, we've talked downgrading a bit on terms of, you know, uh, if you have debt. But again, guys, I want to just emphasize on this point of downgrading. And I usually talk about it. And, and is there, is there what, what I say, Stephanie? Why mm -hmm. are you downgrading? That's the point. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I was kicked out of my house because I couldn't pay rent, do you mm -hmm. know the first thing I did, Stephanie? I mm. downgraded. I moved from a better house into a cheaper house with a pit latrine. The pit latrine was the same as the bathroom. The mm. same pit latrine was the bathroom. That's the house I was I moved into. Because I knew I couldn't afford a decent place at the moment. It was hard. So I had to downgrade. I didn't think about what people are going to say. You know, this guy, 
is suffering. This guy is living. No, I didn't think about that. All I cared about was surviving. Mm -hmm. How do I survive? How do I make the best out of my current situation? So what do you mm -hmm. need? Downgrade. Downgrading mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. that you are suffering. Downgrading means you're being strategic because you want to come and grow. So if you are somebody who wants to grow, what are you willing to give up now for a better tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Downgrade. Leave that particular big house. Go to different location. Live there. If you have a big mm -hmm. phone, you can download a small phone. From this phone, I have five phones. All right, and I can assure you, Stephanie, some of them have just parked them. They are laughing. I'm not even using them. I, I I appreciate this phone. Do you know why? I don't charge it often. I charge it once, maybe every two weeks, two to three, whatever it is. So this car phone is always on. So that's why I love this small phone. But I have, I have mm. smartphones. I have about five smartphones. But I, I love this one so much because this gives me convenience. Then to go off and society, then to make noise. I'm able to focus. Mm. Mm. It's, 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 it's a pretty fantastic uh, phone. All right? You can downgrade. Have a small phone. It's not bad. It's not old fashioned. Just because you have a small phone, doesn't mean you don't have the money. I have the money to buy a new phone. But look at the phone I have. I'm using this phone. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad about it. People that are broke are obsessed with making a name. They mm -hmm. need more expensive than the rich people. Have you seen? Stop doing things that make you look rich. Start getting rich. Start mm -hmm. doing things that are going to bring money into your life. A show off will not help anybody. No, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was talking on the phone, and you know, somebody was saying, "Ah, you still use this small phone?" Wow, mm -hmm. I saw this available. They were saying, "No, it's okay. I can afford an expensive phone, but I'm okay with this phone." All right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's okay to downgrade. It's not that you are suffering. You just, you have to downgrade for you to upgrade. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. feel embarrassed. Don't feel shy. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Indeed, Stephen. Um. I guess we are done with our points for the day. With the few minutes that we have, if it's okay, I guess we could get to read out some of the comments. Unless you've got any final remarks, I think we're okay to go in with some of the comments and then get to say our goodbye. No, let, let, let's, 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 let's just get some get us. Guys, tell us in the comments what are your get your take your take homes uh, from this session. We want to hear your, you know, want to hear from you, want to hear what you are going with home. And what is your experience? How are you dealing with power? Please give us your take homes. We can read a few comments. So we have maybe that's and checks. I know the check saying cheaper housing option, and I see how much um, rent you can afford. Don't look up to people, how they will see you, your situation. Thanks for the info. Yeah. True. You don't have to worry so much about people, right? Yeah. Mushi here says, prepare for the unthinkable, have an emergency fund, save up for the emergency, spare a small amount each month, uh, have a starter. True. Yeah. John, uh, is it John? John Matutu, right? Says, yes. cut spending. Asset liquidation, debt management, downgrade if need be. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Three fingers for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very true. I know Dania, um, the same point. Uh, people want to look uh, rich whilst they are poor. It's better to live uh, the life that you can afford. Thanks for the great lesson. True. Miriam Musonda saying downgrade to upgrade uh, Shadrick Chattered Account. Mm -hmm. Having contingency plan is key. Avoid debt, downgrade when necessary. That's Olivia, Olivia right? That's Olivia yeah. Yami Kongoma. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Olivia. Good to know that you actually are following. Uh, Roslyn uh, Kawanga Mambwe says debt management is very important. I agree with you. Is it look? Is it uh, lack it? Lak I want Salamo. to say, yeah, Lak Salamo saying uh, we should be doing what makes us look rich. Yeah, not the other way around. Well, that yeah. should be um, yeah a last comment. We we might not read all of them, but um, 
this is still in while you're saying downgrade don't live life to please people stay in a cheaper home invest in something keep even the little coins you have stay away from debt and don't live a life pretending to be rich exactly yeah. that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the common side in fantastic side yeah uh, then uh, I think we have to actually let it go from here. Thanks to all of you that came through. Continue to text us on the comment section. I think till next week, it's uh, bye for now. And uh, remember to uh, keep a debt free life and obviously get to think about how you will use, uh, make alternatives for the Lord Shedding. And then see you next week. Thank you so very much, guys. We appreciate your constructive comments. May God bless you. May you find peace, love, and, you know, joy. God bless. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you.